So today, what we're going to talk about is setting boundaries and realizing the importance of our job. And I am going to um, read from the Bible a section that is called, it, that is like, it's about the virtuous woman. And it's really about the work of a homemaker is really what it's about. It's about the work of, of somebody in charge of home. We have so diluted the importance of homemaking, of housekeeping. You know, now when people say housekeeping, what do you think of? You think of somebody with a dust, dust um, wand, what do they call them? With some duster, uh, apron on, and they, you know, they work for Molly Maid or something like that. They work, you know, like a, a cleaner. That's not what housekeeping is. I think it's in, um, it's in one of the, um, it's one of the epistles. And I think it's Jude. Let me see if I can find it real fast. If I can't find it real fast, I won't, I won't go there. But anyway, I thought it was in Jude. I guess it's not. But if you want to look it up, you can find it where it says, it says keepers at home. It makes it, it makes it like your housekeeping or something like that. The word keep is guard, guardian, guardian of the home. We are to be guardians of the home. God told Adam, to dress and to keep the garden. Keep is the same word for guard the garden. So everything that comes in, everything that goes out, these th we're supposed to be guarding, guarding our home. You wanna bring something in the house that you found on the curb? You wanna bring something in the house that you found at a garage sale or something? You pray about it. You lift it up to God, you cleanse that thing. Don't let, you have people that just come by, stop by. Are they going to be yapping about bad stuff? Are they going to be bringing negativity into the house? You guard that home. What are you listening to during the day? What do you have on television? Would you let a person come in the house and scream some of the things in your living room that we allow the television to be screaming in our house? Probably not. You probably kick them the hell out. You're not going to be saying those things in front of my family. You're not going to be acting that way in front of my family. You're not, or even if you live alone, you're not going to be talking like that in front of me. That's not acceptable. Yet we have this box in our house that we invite in there, turn it on and allow to spew out all that it wants to. We are to be guardians of the home, keepers of at home. It's a big deal. So now here, I'm going to read um the virtuous woman all right now i'm not going to get into a bible study here okay um so just there's a lot of things i'm just going to go over i'm not going to comment on um but i'm going to stop occasionally and talk about some things okay so try to listen really really deeply and believe me i'm not speaking to only christians you could take what you like and leave the rest we can learn from many different things right here we go 31, chapter 31 of Proverbs, verse 10. We're going to start with 10. And I'm sorry about the little hissing sound. There's definitely a hissing sound you hear because my computer is overheating. And you have the speaker that you hear me with, so you, you hear that too. Okay, so here we go. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he has no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. Now, remember, we're talking about a time here where you didn't go to the next store and purchase a garment. You made, you made it. And sometimes you even made the cloth, okay? With, you, you, um, you, you wove the cloth. So remember what we're talking about in the context here. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. This woman had maidservants. She had people that helped take care of the house. Why is that? Because it is not an easy job. It is, and we have left it to be just haphazardly who gives a crap about it and it 
it's such a shame. It happened sometime in the 80s, like just at the end of the 70s in the beginning of the 80s, when women that stayed home were lazy and women that went to work were bad mothers. Um, everybody was supposed to, women were supposed to be able to do it all. Well, men were never required to do it all. And women should never have been required to do it all either. Okay. She's like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also when it is night and gives meat to her household. She takes care of her household. She takes care of her maidservants. She doesn't just crash and burn at night. She, she rises also while it is night and she takes care of details. She prepares for tomorrow. In other words, she considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands and plants a vineyard. Um, this woman has her own money. So look, she considers a field and buys it. Does it say she considers a field? She owns property and it's her own. Does, she, does it say that she goes to her husband and she says, can I have some money? There's a piece of property that I want to get. I'm thinking about, nah, -uh. she doesn't have to ask him. She considers a field and she buys it. And then what does she do? She starts a business. How does she do that? With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. Hmm. She girds her, so is this woman lazy? No, absolutely not. Could she do these things if she was doing a hundred other, other things? Nope. If somebody called her on the phone, would she drop what she was doing to jump on the phone? Nope. Why? How could she do all she's doing and juggle all of that? You can't. And do you think that it's selfish to say, oh, so-and-so wants to talk to me. So-and-so needs a ride. So-and-so needs me to do this. So so-and-so just private messaged me. Oh, these text messages that just came in. Oh, I got to answer all my emails. Do you think she could possibly do that and consider that her house was a priority? It's not selfish to take care of you and yours. It's necessary. And if all of us took care of us and ours, the whole freaking world would be a beautiful place because it's inside of our front doors where the whole world lives on the outside. Okay, ready? She girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. What does that mean? She takes care of her body. She girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. This is talking about her. She doesn't have any self-worth issues. She doesn't look in the mirror and say, ah, oh, this and ah, oh, that, and eh, I'm ugly. And, no, she perceives that her merchandise is good and her candles goes not out by night. Now, what that means is it's like an Orientalism. She prays. They used to take a candle. They put it by a window. And it was the representation that she was praying. She was praying for a family. She was praying for a community. Her candle goes not out by night. She prays. She lays her hand to the spindle. And her hands hold the distaff. She, she makes cloth. She stretches her hand to the poor. Yay. She stretches her hand to the needy. So she takes care of hers. She also takes care of others, but in a balance. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for her household are clothed with scarlet. So her house is taken care of. She's not afraid when it gets cold. Scarlet is another word for like royalty. Do we think that about our houses? Do we think that about our homes? That our homes are, are, are a, a, a place that is in the condition of royalty well why should that be well you're you are the daughter of the king you are the son of the king the king of kings you're actually you're the you're the sister or the brother of the king of kings and you are the daughter of the god of most high he, everything is here his everything so is your home royalty it should be do you treat it that way well, it's not that important. Everything else is important. I could do that later. Not according to this, you can't. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothes, her clothing is silk and purple. Now, before it was talking about her household's clothing, right? Which was like her household. She's not afraid of her household for the cold. Her, um, her household are clothed with scarlet. Now it's talking about her apparel what she wears. Do you throw on crappy stuff every day? Do you have throw on clothes? Get rid of them. Get rid of them. 
if you wouldn't be seen outside the house in that clo in those clothes, you shouldn't be seen on the inside of the house. I don't care if you live alone. You're important. Who you think is important. You send this message to yourself every day that you throw on that piece of crap and then you change to go out. When you go out and you have that really nice acceptable outfit on, you're saying, and you're at home putting on that piece of crap, you're saying, I am not important, but they are. Those people I don't even know. Those people that don't know me and I don't love. But the people that I love and the people that I know or myself, I'm not that important. See, it's skewed. So you are deserving of beautiful things. Her coverings of tap, she makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing are silk and purple. I am not talking about expensive here either. Now, I'm a minimalist. I have very few things. It's the way I like to live. We don't have to be what other people are. If you can afford four very nice things, wear them over and over again. Who cares? That's what really successful men do, if you notice. Um, what's his name? Cowell, the guy from uh, American Idol. I forgot his first name. Um, and then um, Steve Jobs, um, th there's all these men that they have a uniform. They wear like a, a white t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Same white t-shirt, pink pair of jeans, 10 pair of them, 10 pair of them. That's what they wear. We could do the same thing. Figure out what it is that makes you happy and get it. I used to be like a discount freaking queen. For me, I would go to the discount racks in Kmart, in, in the discount stores. That's where I would go. And I wouldn't even go to the discount you know, the regular things. I'd go to the discount aisle in the discount stores. Then I went to Al-Anon. I learned some things and I figured, I've i learned that I am, I'm worthy of some nice things. And I started to shop in the mall. And I started to, I liked Ann Taylor. I loved um, Black, Heart, Black House White Market. And what I discovered was when they have sales, their things on their sale rack which is which are beautiful are even less than the cheap crap in the other stores so what i do now is i buy myself good quality but very few of them because even if i even if i could get all that i wanted i still wouldn't want everything because i choose to put me as a priority and not my stuff because the more stuff you have, the more you have to manage. The more you have to manage, the less time you have to enjoy your life. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it does have to make you feel good. That's all. And you could shop at Target. I'm not saying don't shop at Target. Of course, go ahead. There was one interview I saw Oprah on, and she calls it Target, and she loves their flip-flops. Like, you know, we really have to get outside of what the world says we're supposed to be, what the world says we're supposed to have, what someone else deems like comparison is the freaking devil just don't compare yourself just like for one minute just be all by yourself and ask yourself what do i want what would make me happy if i didn't have to care about what anybody else thought what would i want and then get it what can you have that makes you feel good wear it don't get something because you feel like you're not worthy because it's important you take care of your body, you strengthen your arms, um, you gird your loins with strength, you strengthen your arms, you take care of your family with prayer and priority, and you take care of them as far as like, <clears throat> we don't have to be afraid for snow. Um, you know, having more than you need is going to take away from having, um, having the best that you can have. So, and, and you take care of yourself. Get rid of those clothes that you, you know, or just throw on clothes. Don't have one throw on clothes. The only thing you can have that is, you know, damaged in some way is paint clothes. But even those, you got to feel good in. You, if you're going to wear paint clothes, it should be something that you would still be willing to have to run to the Home Depot or the local hardware store in. We should never feel like crap. We should never dress in a way that makes us feel like crap. Okay. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. That just means that he's respected in his community. She, she makes fine linen and sells it. Oh, 
my goodness, another business this woman has. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. Do we, do we live every day with strength and honor? Do we? Can we live every day in strength and honor when we spill out our front doors and trip while we're walking across the floor to the bathroom in the middle of the night? Can we? It's important. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in times to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. What are we talking about all day long? This is important. What Are we gossiping? What do we listen to? What do we watch? Do we watch drama after drama after drama? That crap bleeds into our lives. It does. You can't help it. It's the way we're built. Pathways grow in our brains based on what we think continually. And so there we are now, stuck thinking this thing because we need these habits. Without the habits, we wouldn't be able to, to live. If you had to constantly learn how to drive your car every time you got into it, it would be impossible to live life, right? After a while, that whole procedure becomes a habit, you're done, right? You get in the car, you put it, you start to put your foot on the brake, put, start it, put it in vain, look in the mirror, drive away, right? It happens automatically. That's because it's a habit. We can program ourselves to have habits that work against us. So when it says she opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness, what are, we, what, are, what are we spewing out of our mouths inside of our home that we're supposed to be guarding? What's bouncing off of our walls? She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Now, why is that? I know that sometimes we can be super idle as organizationally challenged people. There's a lot of reasons for that. Some of it is that we just don't know what to do. Some of it is we get so overwhelmed with it that we can't unravel it. We don't, we've never been taught the process. So you can't do what you don't know. But why, what do, you, what do you, I think the reason that she eats not the bread of idleness, she absolutely recognizes how freaking important her job is. So when she wakes up in the morning, there's purpose. Her feet hit the floor and she's running because she knows, she knows how important it is for her to run her household well, to take care of her household, her children, her maidservants, her husband, herself. She knows this is so important. Her children arise up and call her blessed. How nice would that be? Her husband also, and he praises her. We do teach people how to treat us. So if we have put ourselves in the back burner forever, we have put ourselves into on the, in those throw-on clothes. We have not demanded a sense of respect for ourselves because we haven't respected ourselves. Then we have to take a look. Is, is what I'm doing feeding what's happening in my life? Okay, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excels them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Bada boom, there we go. All right, so like I said, take what you like and leave the rest, okay? Um, but I really do believe that um, we have to realize the priority that we have at home. If you have somebody that is private messaging you constantly and you feel rude not to respond, it's okay to say, geez, I'm really sorry. Thank you so much for wanting to chat with me, but um, I have a job to do. You have friends that are always asking you, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? And because we are such people pleasers and we've always run they don't know any better they think we like it they think we want to and we do want to because we want everybody to love us right but it's not the way to live and when when you prioritize you everyone else will prioritize them too i think that we all can uh kind of get to a place where we every day can just like just kind of hit reset you know just kind of hit reset. Just wake up in the morning and say, I know I was like this yesterday, but that doesn't mean it's a life sentence. I don't have to be like this for the rest of my life. I'm making changes. 
and then other people in your life, they're probably not going to like it because people don't like change. And so you're going to get some resistance out there. Just stick to your guns. You're going to have people in your life that probably are going to balk at it when you say, no, I can't, because you're so used to saying yes. And you're so used to not giving your home a priority, not giving yourself a priority, not giving your family a priority, not giving your home a priority. And so there's going to be people that are angry about it, that don't understand it. And maybe even you might lose some people. You can tell them, look, I, I, I decided that I'm going to give my life a priority so that I could be the best for everybody else. So this is what I'm doing. And if the people that love you will understand. They'll be like, oh, I, I know the mess that you've lived in for all of these years. I know how hard it's been on you. All right, I'm going to support you. And sometimes they might, you know, waver, waver on that a little bit because it's just human nature. And you might lose some people. But those people that you lose, like that friend that just stops calling you, you just know that she only called you before because you were always there to give to her. But that person you would know, well, she was never really a friend, was she? So it's all going to be all right. It really is. In the long run, what can be wrong? What can be wrong with taking care of your home, yourself, and your life? Nothing. Right? This was a Facebook Live video that I did, and I edited it, and I got it on YouTube for you. If you want to hook up with me on Facebook, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash the tidy tutor. If I bring any value to your life and if I help you at all, I would love it if you subscribed and liked this video. It will help me and I help you, you help me. It's a wonderful thing. Okay, thanks a lot for being in my world and I'll see you on the next video.